up at Unicorn here. I want to discuss Jessica Turberry, aka Zach Brown. So who is this? Um, this was basically one of the top draft picks when it comes to the NBA. Um, as Zach, um, it, it, it's really difficult um, because I want to give honor to both uh, pronouns. So I guess I can say when she was Zach, right? When she was him, she was an incredible basketball player, you know, very promising student, was made offers by schools such as Kentucky. I mean, just a phenom, something to be truly proud of, um, someone to be truly proud of. And I mean, this, uh, she had a really tragic life. And I'm just going to say allegedly, because I don't want to, um, I don't want to get into any trouble. But like, people who went to their high school say that uh, when Jessica Turberry was Zach Brown, that um, he and his brother, who are almost the same age, um, that's why now they go by Twin Turberry, right? Um, they were sold by their own mother into basically uh, sex trafficking. Like, like she sold them to grown men. And so Zach Brown, as a man, always had very effeminate um, body mo- movements, facial expressions, body posture, personality, and... Um, basically going through that tough of a life uh, sent him down a criminal path. So he got into a fight his freshman year um, playing basketball at a university and was just kicked out. And I completely understand why the university, because at first I was just like, come on, it was just an altercation. How do you get kicked all the way out of a university for getting into one fight on the court at that, right? I, I thought that was like, why would you like I thought that was discrimination but when I thought about it I'm like you know Zach Brown was 7-1 um that's an unstoppable human being when you're 7-1 and 265 pounds like that's not fat by any means if you know anything about height and weight and bone structure and skeletal frame and and like he well built not fat at all but built and tall like a wall like that was truly a safety concern like if he loses his temper right because he's from florida right uh zach brown from florida so you know you have all the florida man um stuff in there um they let him go and they send a letter to the entire university letting everybody know like look it didn't work out he's not going to be here anymore and he went back to high school and he stayed in number one or in the top you know 10 draft picks until he continued to get arrested robbed a store like like just went through a lot and i really really blame the child abuse that he went through um for creating that kind of anger and and just being that kind of lost but basically um Zach Brown made his transition to Jessica Turberry, as did uh, his younger brother, who they're almost the same age. So they call each other, you know, twin Turberry or whatever. Um, they're very tall. And I look, in my opinion, I, I see attractive women. I, I think they're attractive, right? I think they look good in their makeup. They look good in their hair, their weave, their nails, like, like you know, good for you. But as a biological woman, what's scary about that is if an entire university was so afraid of him, if the people who ran a university were so afraid of him being seven foot one, then imagine what women would feel, you know, if he gets into trouble again and he's seven one, two hundred and sixty five 265 pounds full of muscles and a promising NBA draft pick and he's locked in prison with them because they're not going to send uh, Jessica Turberry to a male prison or jail if something were to happen again. And on top of that, I mean, if Jessica ever wanted to be in the WNBA, like even if she was 40, she would still be able to outplay a Brianna Stewart. Stewart. She would still be able to outplay a Nafisa Collier, a Diana uh, Taurasi, Courtney Vandersloot. I mean, Tamika Catchings. <laughs> I mean, Lisa Leslie, Maya Moore, Lauren Jackson, Cynthia, uh, Cynthia Cooper Dake, um, Sylvia Fowl, Fowl. Like, dude, the list goes on. Because there's always going to be that genetic superiority in terms of strength that you have as a male. I had a video on my other channel where a trans woman was saying, look, I will never put my hands on a woman. And I was just like, I applaud you for that, 
for acknowledging like, you know, as a trans woman, you still have the strength of a male and there's no hormone pill that's ever going to take that away. Um, so for us, I mean, a lot of people want to, you know, scream transphobe and bigotry and this and this. And I'm just like, no, we, we have legitimate concerns. And instead of being so quick to polarize us on, you know, the wrong side of the conversation, like do the work and try to understand, like, let's sit at the table. Let's have these conversations. Right. Because, um, I mean, if you put just, just one, you know, transgender, uh, Who's that cute little girl? I, I forget her name. I'll probably put a picture of her in here. Uh, she was trying to play soccer or something. And she's a very popular transgender girl who was on TLC. And she was just like, this is not what America is about. This is unfair. And I would say, like uh, Funky Dineva said, who is a homosexual male, he was just like, you know, I wish there was a third space when I was a kid. Like, you know, you had the girls over there with their tea sets and you had the guys over there playing their sports. He was just like, I would have been okay with all the rest of the, and he said, you know, a, a term that I can't say, but basically with all the other gay boys playing, you know, jacks or something you know tic-tac-toe or you know dodgeball like like he's like if there would have been like a third space he would have been happy with that and i think that's the solution that's the solution like th there just needs to be a third space because it's not fair we wouldn't have a simone biles or a gabby douglas like like we wouldn't have these greats like once you know a mediocre man a mediocre transgender woman who becomes a gymnast would be able to out, outperform these women because th there is a biological degree of strength that we can't just ignore and say is a social construction and it's fake and it's all in our and all this gender stuff is all in our mind because it really is not. And we want to we want to validate you without participating in a delusion with you. Because we have our own very real issues as African-American women already who are highly masculinized by the culture and our femininity is already robbed from us. And then on top of that, we have, you know, transgender African-American women who are basically leading the charge of, you know, I'm a woman like you're a woman. And we're saying, no, you're not. And they're saying, you know, we're not like you on one hand, so you can't tell our stories because, you know, we have these lives and we went through these transitions and this discrimination and we're like, right. But then at the same time, they're just like, nope, nope, nope. We're the same. We're the same. We're the same. I'm a woman like you. I'm like, uh, we, we can't really have it both ways. And I think the story of Jessica Turberry is a prime example of why like there are things that are problematic I, I, again like jessica turberry could enter the WNBA at 40 years old i mean i don't know if there's an age restriction but you know how the girls are in their 20s and 30s you know and you know as a woman you know you, you got to make your way, way out you know in your 40s because your reproductive system just the way that we age and the way that our bodies change and i'm just like <sighs> Honestly, Jessica Turberry could be 50 on the floor and still outplaying Sue Bird, you know, still outplaying, you know, Maya Moore, right? Like it just, it would just happen. And that's not fair. So on one hand, when um, the pretty little transgender girl was like, you know, that's not fair. I can't play soccer with the rest of the girls. Like I felt that. But at the same time, I'm just like, it's not fair either way. So the solution to me is a third space where you can complete with, you know, you compete with like, you know how in court you go to court and it's like, oh, give that person a jury of their peers. Your sports, what, what you're playing in should be in, you know, with your peers, people who are who have a similitude to you. I mean, that's that's what I truly believe in. So when I see, you know, these uh, what is it? The transgender woman who uh, got into, uh, it was an MMA fight with a biological woman. You know, you could hear uh, the transgender woman crushing the bones in the woman's face. And, you know, the audience was crying and feeling bad. But it's just like, well, it's woman on woman. And I'm just like, are we really going to act like this is equal? Like, it's not. So let's create a third space. Because at this, at this point, there are... We live in a society today in 2021 where there are truly enough transgender people to start those kind of leagues. I mean, you want to talk about how we had the Negro Leagues when it comes to baseball and we had like, you know, when it was, you know, oh, separate but equal, yada, yada, yada. Right. You know, Plessy versus Ferguson, like all the, you know, segregation, like we had our own leagues and played played among our peers. 
Now, of course, you know, the only difference was race, human on human, like, you know, man on man, female on female, yada, yada. But like, there's a reason why most countries, when they send out an infantry throughout history, they send men. They send men. And you can talk to me about Amazon warriors and you can talk to me about Wakanda women in West Africa. And yeah, but like they're the exception to the rule and the exception does not negate the rule. It just it actually proves the rule. Like that's why they're so well known, because it's very, very rare. It's extremely rare. Like infantry soldiers, I mean, are mostly men. It's not that women never fought. Right. You know, you have your Joan of Arcs and whoever else. But I'm just like, in reality, the, the biology like like it's different and to say that it's not is is truly oppressive and and delusional so um with that being said like i just hope that this is a conversation that people can have with level heads without scratching insults without scathing words without bigotry without you know phobias without jumping to conclusions like you know because there there truly is an overreaching into the realm of womanhood that you know transgender men are not doing into the realm of you know manhood like these are differences that ought to be honored and respected both ways so um with that being said, I really hope my washer and dryer are not too loud for you. I know definitely my water fountain can be heard in the background. But um, I just want to say really quickly that my giveaway, my $50 giveaway, will be closed on April 30th, uh, 2021. Uh, so you want to go ahead and hop in there. Again, the rules are subscribe to my channel and turn on your post notifications. That's the bell that you see. Um, on my channel and then also follow me on Instagram and drop a unicorn emoji on my Instagram on whatever the most recent photo is that I post right so that way on April 30th I will be able to conduct a live stream and have everybody come up maybe guess a number between 1 and 20 and do things like that and if we don't reach 2,000 subscribers, then I'll just be able to do it some other way. Um, because that's the goal. Once we reach 2,000 subscribers, then I give away $50. But if 2,000 subscribers doesn't happen, then I'll still give away $50. But maybe I'll break it into 25 you know, for two people as opposed to 50 for one person. So anyhow, um, love and high regards to the Turberry Twins. Um, rooting for you. You're long. You're beautiful. Stand in your truth. Um, and here's wishing safety for all black women, just, just period <laughs> for all of us, all of us. I am up at a unicorn and I am out of here.